I think the Christian music should have an element of John the Baptist saying to Herod, you are defying God with your sexual immorality. There is an authority above you. You need to repent. There's an issue there that I think Christian music has either lost or, or maybe never had. I'm not sure. Maybe they had it in the beginning. I think that's a prophetic ministry, not just the worship ministry, but the prophetic counterculture to the sexual revolution and the anti-Christian revolution. John, as I've already mentioned, uh, we know that you have a podcast, Cooper Stuff. Now, with everything else that you have going on, furniture building, your uh, your touring around the country in a band, uh, what made you want to dive into podcasting? The truth is, it is a lot of work, and uh, when you do podcasting, you make a lot of people mad. But the truth is this: I felt the Lord speaking to me that He was shifting my my mission a little bit. He was shifting my vision a little bit, and it was time to move from just a proclaiming Jesus stage into a little bit more of a defending the faith stage mm. because we are seeing droves of Christians fall away from the faith, droves of Christians fall away from believing in the authority of Scripture, and their lives are falling apart. And I was devastated by that. And, what I, and I said, God, what can I do? And I felt the Lord saying, it's time to start defending the faith. And this is kind of what you're walking into. So I started doing a podcast and I just try to say things simply, easy, I hope, explain to people what's happening and what I believe the Bible says of how we should live. I love it. Man, you are speaking my language. Your first episode in the podcast was called What is Love? Why did you start there? You know, the truth is that the first probably 10 episodes or maybe 15 were very different than what the podcast became. The first ones were meant to be more fun, and I and I would make a lot of jokes. I would talk about things. I was trying to find this middle ground where I could talk about Christianity, but in a way that wasn't maybe too offensive to all sorts of people to try to cast this wide net. And because I was seeing all the vitriol that was happening, and I and I didn't like that. I just started realizing the truth is is. We're not living in a time that, that that is being made possible because the world has changed so much. It's just going to have to be time to speak truth to what is happening. But what is love was a fun one because it actually came out on Valentine's Day. So I used it as, as an episode to say, I've been married for 23 years at the time. And in the music business, you're not supposed to tell how long you've been married because people I go, oh, don't tell people because they'll know that you're old or that, you know, you're not available. And I've always celebrated my marriage to the rock world because I, marriage is beautiful and we need to see stories of faithfulness in the, in, in the entertainment industry. So that's why I started with that. Here's a couple more topics from some of your episodes on the podcast. The power of music. W- what was the message there? Power of music is, is kind of quite important. See, I think the secular world has understood this more than the Christian world, to be honest, which I think is a travesty. The secular world is understood. If you go back and you look into the past, you want to know where civilizations, how they rose and how they, how they fell. What did they believe? One of the pillars you're going to look at is art. Art not only shows what a, a, uh, a civilization valued or worshipped, but art also shows how, how people change the culture. And for people that don't believe that, just do me a favor. Think about the 1960s sexual revolution. What do you think of when you think of the sexual revolution? Most everybody imagines a video of rock bands singing about free love and hippies, a war sentiment. That was music being used to propel the culture. I think the Christian music has done a good job of saying what we value, which is worship. We worship God. We haven't always done the best job of being the counterculture And so what I'm talking about power of music is I think the Christian music should have an element of John the Baptist saying to Herod, you are defying God with your sexual immorality. There is an authority above you. You need to repent. There's an issue there that I think Christian music has either lost or or maybe never had. I'm not sure. Maybe they had it in the beginning. I think that's a prophetic ministry, not just the worship ministry, but the prophetic counterculture to the sexual revolution and the anti-Christian revolution. I think we lost it because if we go back to the original Christian music, we go right into the book of Psalms, which were war songs, and there was lots of imprecatory prayers, and there was lots of holding people accountable, especially kings, 
right? Yes. Kiss the son lest, I lest he be angry. Amen. <laughs> yes, 100% amen. You just nailed it. That was the awesome. I love the one. I love the one when David said, remind the nations they are but men. That's right. And I'm so thankful for what you're doing and all that you're saying to a young generation today, John. Hi, I'm Kirk Cameron. And thanks for watching the Kirk Cameron on TVN YouTube channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. A couple of things. Please make sure that you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so that you're notified every time a new video is posted. And be sure to share your takeaway in the comments and invite a friend to join the conversation.